morning everybody another Champions League match day is in the books and I had a feeling yesterday was a little bit more action although the surprising result I mean it's still uh, Real Madrid losing in Moscow uh, let's run through the games um, again I saw all the, the highlights of all the games but you know that's all the matches condensed into five minutes each so um, don't really know how much uh, truth there is I trust that the reporters are accurately assessing how the games went of course there's always some leeway especially if you're leaning one way or another for certain teams and I know since they're from Germany that probably they give a little bit more um, credit to German teams or uh, put the German perspective in there but you know uh, me not necessarily being for the German teams I think I try to filter that one let's run through the games because I think there was quite some interesting stuff happening um, group A uh, we had let's start with the German team Dortmund at home to Monaco there was I think Yes, I think when uh, Monaco eliminated, when they made the semi-final run, Dortmund, and there was this um, bomb attack on the Dortmund bus. I think it was against Monaco. Anyway, I know about that because I, at that time I was in the hospital and I actually could watch the game in the hospital. Anyway, uh, from what I could gather, the first half was relatively even. Yes, Dortmund had maybe a little bit more from the game, but uh, it was relatively even and uh, both uh, teams had chances to score and right after the half um, Favre brought on uh, Buen Larsen who scored within five minutes one nothing for Dortmund and it was just one Dortmund move towards goal from that moment on there should have been a uh, Royce had a great chance that he missed uh, Dortmund got a penalty that Alcacer missed Alcacer made good on his miss. I mean, he, he crossbar and out. Alcacer made good on his miss, uh, made it 2 nothing, and then basically buried the game. But this was one of those games, if you don't make the second goal, um, you might as well end up drawing that game. Uh, because then Monaco had a small chance. And um, it ended 3-0 because Royce put another one in, in at the time. Oops. That's suboptimal. I'm sorry for that. I have to watch out for that. So, Royce, maybe I'll stop here and try to fix this. Let's stop here quickly. So, if Royce doesn't get this goal, uh, if Royce would have made the earlier goal, uh, I think it could have been done by uh, well before it actually was and I honestly have to say this could have been ugly for Monaco uh, this could have been a 5 nothing, and no one would have had to complain honestly so that's what I thought a little bit out of it now because of all that uh, but I think we're gonna get through it the other game was Atleti against uh, club I say Brugge because that's the way of German, but Bruges, I think, is the English way of saying the town, beautiful town in Belgium. Which fortunately, I have never been. This, uh, this, this was one of those that I would like to see. Um, I think Belgium, there are a bunch of really nice towns. I gotta make it to the low countries sooner or later, honestly. But yeah, Atletico uh, took the game. To their opponents, to Club Brugge. Uh, I keep saying Brugge. I, 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 I just like it better this way. Bruges doesn't sound that nice. Um, and got the lead uh, through Griezmann, but at that point they probably should have led already by two. Uh, Brugge actually got a really, really nice uh, equalizing goal. Um, that was a, that that one was was a really long range shot. One one, but yeah. Atleti seemingly was uh, bothered by that because they came out storming again and Griezmann made his second um, they probably again it was just a game of one goal from that point on 
and late in the time Chris Mann again uh, made uh, made a nice assist. The third goal was also, I mean, I don't think it was on 50, but this was 60 70 percent, yes. So, uh, to make it a 3 1 for Atleti. Um, what's happening here? The traffic is a little bit old this morning. Um, but overall, I think Salni guests had a few uh, good chances that, that they should have been they should have been converted. So yeah, overall, that surely was a well. This a three-one win, and I think this group is going the way that everyone expected: the Dortmund and uh, Atleti are gonna make it through. So I hope now that things are gonna calm down here a little bit. Because there are a few confused people ahead of me and actually this distracts me from making this video. Um, before we go to groups B and C, let's also go through the other uh, group that is probably the one the least attractive of the four that played yesterday. We have uh, Schalke playing in Moscow, uh, which was interesting because Hövedes is playing now for Lok Moscow and he was of course a Schalke idol and against the coach that uh, actually eliminated him from the squad in Tedesco. Um, yeah, the game was relatively even in the second half. I think it, uh, Schalke took over, asserted themselves and got the late winner. And that was that. I think the winner was the smallest player on the pitch, uh, <laughs> which is uh, after a corner. Probably had, 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 it, had it in it. This is one of those things that I find so weird in soccer that very often the smallest player on the pitch uh, scores the header after a corner. Well, it's not often, but you know, I'm thinking Snyder against um, Brazil in 2010, and there are for surely others. Um, that game, I wanted to say that I like the Lok Moscow uh, shirts. They actually uh, look really nice. The Schalke in grey doesn't look right, honestly. Uh, yes, it makes a nice contrast, but I really wish this was a white jersey. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't look that great, uh, the grey one. Just how I feel it. And then the other game in the group was Porto at home to Galatasaray. Um, it was a weird highlight or reel to watch because um, from the highlights, I had the feeling that Galatasaray's dominating game, but the commentator actually said that all the statistics were for Porto. It's just that Galatasaray had uh, better chances. And yes, I think Galatasaray probably should have gotten more out, out, out of this game, especially in the first half. Porto got the lead uh, early in the second half and hung on to it. But probably there was more in there for Galatasaray. Um, it was nice to see both teams in their traditional jerseys. It was a nice color matchup, I have to say. Uh, blue, white against the uh, yellow, red. Um, that's one that I liked. Um, of course, the back of Gala, of Gala having, you know, just the monocolor back, at least on the upper side. Yeah, I really hope that the UEFA regulations that I talked about are coming into place next season. Yeah, uh, the matchups in Group A, by the way, were all as expected, all playing in the first jerseys, all nice matchups. Uh, so, no complaints from me there. If it's not remarkable, I won't say much about it anymore. Which group shall we do first? C or D? Uh, B. I think I'm gonna go to C because uh, it's uh, the story is told a little bit quicker, I think. Uh, it started off with the early game where Paris Saint-Germain just destroyed Red Star Belgrade and yeah, was to be expected. Neymar scoring two free kick goals. I really thought that the first one was just uh, was extraordinary. Um, I think Cavani scored the third. I mean, there was a, a spell in the first half where I think within 15 minutes they scored four goals. Never looked back. <laughs> it was actually the I liked how the Belgrade players ce celebrated when they made it, I think, 5-1. Uh, Markus Marin, German, uh, former German. I want to say international, but I'm not 100 on that. But yeah, 6-1 uh, thrashing. Uh, if Paris Saint-Germain 
is on against an inferior opponent, there is just no other way uh, going. And again, I know the Red Star people have been killing me after this ultimate video. And I say inferior, I don't mean that the Red Star Belgrade is bad, but they are clearly have not the quality of Paris Saint-Germain and Paris Saint-Germain took them apart. Uh, it's unfortunate that we have this discrepancy between teams in Europe in general and especially in the Champions League. We all would want to see closer games. Uh, but yeah, the top leagues, it is a fact that top leagues are just that much better than uh, even medium uh, leagues in Europe. And even within the leagues, there's a huge discrepancy in quality. Gotta be said. So yeah, am I a fan of it? No. Would I like that a team like Resta Belgrade is competing with Paris Saint-Germain and not getting thrashed? Of course, I would like to have that. I would like that the leagues are a lot more even. That's what I probably miss in the old European Cup. Uh, you know, the old 80s, 90s, even 70s, where you had that every league. We the champion, you knew that the big leagues are a tad better, but it was not guaranteed. But nowadays, with the teams being able to buy themselves uh, the best teams to get up, that's what they're all gonna have, and that's why we are letting in more teams from England, Italy, Spain, and so on because that gives us the good quality that we all want to see. But of course it goes. It comes with the cost that we see, you know, it hurts me to say, and Ajax played well in the Champions League, but Ajax is, uh, for Champions League considerations, an afterthought. Uh, if they make it out of, out of the group, great, but I don't think they will make it much further. Which hurts me to say, honestly. So, even the Dutch League, and then, you know, if we go other leagues, it just doesn't happen anymore. So yeah, that was Paris Saint-Germain, again the black jerseys, uh, Red Star Belgrade played in the nice home jerseys, really loved that one, the black Paris Saint-Germain jerseys, I, I cannot get behind it. If it was at least blue, I think I could live with it, but the black, no, I'm sorry. No. It's what it is, a cash grab. Jordan Kids, cash grab, that's all that it is. Uh, it completely denies the identity of the team. The other uh, game, of course, was the big clash between uh, Napoli and Liverpool, which, if I would have had the chance yesterday to watch any, any game, I think that's the one I would have chosen. Uh, there's not even a question about that. It was the marquee matchup for me. Uh, and Napoli with a must-win situation after getting only a point in Belgrade. Uh, yep, yeah, it was from what I could get disappointing from Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool is hitting now a little bit of a rough patch. Uh, in the you know they have uh, the League Cup didn't go their way. Now um, Chelsea they got a draw, and yesterday there was almost no sh nothing showing for Liverpool. Uh, Napoli dominated throughout and. Should have probably gotten a goal mid in the second half when I think it was Mertens who hit the bar or Rui, Mario Rui hit the bar. Uh, but they scored the late winner thanks to Insigne, uh, netting it in, putting Napoli top of the group. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, I still think it will be a tough t uh, order for Napoli to make it out of this group. Uh, they have now Paris Saint-Germain twice, where they at least have to get uh, either two draws or a win in order to look comfortable in advancing. Um, I still see Liverpool and Paris Saint-Germain top there. But it's interesting that, you know, it's the second day, uh, first match that Liverpool dominated Paris Saint-Germain and now completely opposite Liverpool being more or less dominated by Napoli. Napoli getting the win and yeah we have to mention the kids, I need them. This neon yellow on the light blue, why do we need that? It just doesn't look right to be honest. 
everybody. So Napoli against the winner. Third win for the third Italian team we're talking about. And then let's go to Group B, uh, which actually I think is not only from the teams in there a great group, but also uh, the teams are rather even, I have the feeling. Uh, let's start with Barcelona at Wembley against uh, Tottenham. Yep, Barcelona got the early goal by Coutinho because Lloris uh, was too motivated to get the ball. Horrible mistake. 1 0 to Barcelona. Uh, Rakitic makes it 2 0 with a wonderful shot. Uh, that was a. Of all the goals yesterday, yesterday Mark Free Free Bricks nice. Yes, the goal by uh, Brugge was a great goal, uh, but how Rakitic hit that ball, absolute gorgeous shot. Making it 2-0 um, for Barcelona, it seems like Barcelona are cruising. Then Messi in two pretty much identical moves, uh, hitting the post twice. Uh, it, it was really a copy-paste thing. Uh, you thought this was a replay, no it wasn't, he hit the post twice. Um, and right after that, uh, Harry Kane made it 2-1. Kind of out of nowhere, because Barcelona seemed to have this game well in the bag. Nope, they seemingly <laughs> were a little bit too overconfident. That's what actually worries me a little bit about Barcelona. I think going forward they're great. Uh, but defensively, I don't know. If I see them in the last few weeks, when I see Gerard Piquet, he is not on the top of his game anymore. And the defense uh, looks shaky. They have a great goalkeeper though. Uh, Ter Stegen uh, bails his defense out more than a few times. Well, after Kane's goal, Messi gets his goal to make it 3-1. Um, and again, you think that Barca is in control. No, Lamela deflected. Uh, makes it 3-2. Um, and again, this is the worrying part. Uh, Barcelona is dominating the game, but they still give up two goals. Sorry, uh, that, that should not happen. Of course, Messi makes it 4-2 as a very funny celebration afterwards. But yeah, um, gotta say this was... I think if this would have ended 4 nothing for Barcelona, this would have been probably a more accurate representation. Uh, it doesn't look good for Tottenham, honestly. Um, you have to get the six points against PSV Eindhoven, and I don't think that those are guaranteed six points, honestly. I mean, PSV Eindhoven got thrashed by... Thrashed. 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 Thrashed, that's not Thrashed for Barcelona. 4-0, uh, but you know, the last three goals came. Uh, late in the game also so yeah uh, and then and I keep this game for last because uh, again it's bitter and yes I can say I'm the Inter Milan hater uh, PSV Eindhoven against Milan, uh, Inter Milan um, that game uh, horrible refereeing in there PSV got again with a wide range shot beautiful uh, goal or nothing. Um, both teams, like in the previous match, playing in their first jerseys. Tottenham actually again in all white, which looks a little, little, little bit odd because you have this uh, navy stripe going around. Um, gets the early lead. Um, again, Inter probably had more of the game, but overall, I think PSV was dangerous and uh, had deserved the lead. And then Handanovic handles the ball outside of the box and if he doesn't do so the attacker is through on an empty net and it would have been to nothing. He only gets a yellow. This is there is not even no room for any for interpretation. This is a clear red guard card for Hamdanovic. Uh, and you cannot feel but cheated at that point. Um, and then to top it all off. Inter equalizes, uh, but Icardi, who makes the assist, was when he got the ball in an offside position. Uh, 
in uh, Nangolan, who actually had an earlier chance. Uh, I think when it was still level, or maybe not. Uh, puts it in. Uh, it's it's a one-one game, but at that moment you can only if you're a PSV fan, you can only feel cheated and. I think I would feel cheated. Even, let's say even if it, if if this was not Inter, but if this was Milan, I still would say this was completely undeserved. Uh, hor this was horrible refereeing. You cannot send the you cannot not send the goalkeeper off. He handles the ball outside of the box. There is no wiggling room there. You cannot give him just a yellow. Uh, maybe if the referee didn't, he didn't see the handball, but uh, whatever. He gave the free kick. Honestly, a horrible decision. And then not seeing the offside, yes, we really need VAR here as well. I think VAR, if VAR was already in place in the Champions League, and I understand it's not easy uh, to get all the technology with all the TV pictures, it's all over Europe, different standards everywhere. I, I can appreciate it. But yesterday it was sorely needed. Because PSV would not have lost this game. Yes, they lost this game because they, then they had an additional defensive error that allowed Icardi. I mean, he was not attacked, he was just accompanied by the defender, and then the goalkeeper comes out. Uh, yeah, didn't look good. Didn't look good this uh, goal by Icardi. Inter again turns the game around. Uh, they should have lost against Tottenham. Maybe they equal, give them the hot one. Yes, they, they, were, they were probably the better team, but they were really, really helped by the referee. Uh, horrible referee. You cannot, just not possible to have it that way. So yeah, Inter and Barcelona sit the six points and now they have the meetings uh, against each other. I honestly don't. This double round thingy that they do uh, is something that I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, because it seems half baked. I'll talk. I have a video idea of how we can improve the Champions League, and that actually will play a role. There. So yeah, we have now a double round: Barcelona against Inter twice. Uh, yeah, the, you know where I want this to go. But I, I think that Inter, after a horrible, hor horrible start, similar to Atleti, gets things going. So I'm be curious to see that. But they have been lucky on more than one occasion, I have to say that. Uh, they are riding the luck. What me, it seems to me what Milan was lacking in luck, Inter is getting at the moment. Hurts a little bit to say that. But yeah, the season, it's a long season. We have lots to go. So yeah, that's my Champions League roundup. We are again at almost 25 minutes. So um, sorry for not being very coherent at the beginning. Let me know which games you watched and whether you agree with what I saw in the highlights. <laughs> uh, I will come a time when I will watch some Champions League games. I actually am hopeful that we can figure out a better schedule. But you know, kids need to be put on a certain schedule. We are starting school and kindergarten for both of them and it's not that easy, but we are, get, we are getting there. We are, we are getting there and I hope that once this is all well established, there will be time for mommy and daddy to hang in front of the TV in the evening watching some games. At least I will watch and my wife will to cuddle with me or whatever. I am really looking forward to it. Again, let me know which games you watched, uh, whether you agree with my observations uh, that I saw and I was told. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Uh, Europa League jersey review is still on. There will be another video posting tonight and tomorrow night all up until Monday. So stay tuned. I'll give you my Europa League review of the matches, at least the matches that I'll be able to see tomorrow in the morning. And yeah, I have a video planned on how to improve the Champions League. No, no, I'm not sure when I will do that, probably on the Tuesday. Up until then, stay tuned and goodbye.